What up, squad? I'm Leland, and on this episode of Royal Key, we're visiting the University of Georgia's track and field facility. And we may run a few laps, maybe, hopefully not, but either way, let's go check it out. All right, squad, so I'm here with uh, Kyle, Freight Train, Garland, mm -hmm. All-American, Decathlete. Yes, sir. We're here at the campus. Beautiful locker room. You guys just opened this in February. Yeah. You've been here for how long? Five years. Yeah. So you saw the old. How, how does this compare to the, to the old locker room? It's really nothing like it. Just to kind of garner the respect to get something like this. I mean, I don't know if they told you the logistics. This is a $10 million locker room. Doesn't even compare to what we used to have. We got what basketball used to have. So it was pretty much just under the old Coliseum, three different separate rooms. It wasn't anything super open like this to to kind of bring in team camaraderie. So something like this is just huge just to to build and grow a team and to build a and grow a dynasty. You know, that's that's what Coach Carroll has been trying to build. That's what she's been trying to grow. And, and you know, to get something like this, I think is a foundation. Being a team captain, how, how big is it for you guys to kind of have that kind of culture, to have that kind of community aspect? It's huge. And I mean, if you look back over the past couple of years of, of how we have been just stepping up our way in the ranks at the NCAA level as a team, I mean, this past indoor season, we finished second overall, our highest finish ever in UJ history. So it's like, this is the foundation of it. And me as a captain, along with Matt Bowling and um, Clay Pender, who have made huge, huge strides as national athletes themselves. Um, we just kind of stress that. Now, as soon as we walk in this locker room, just back to the locker room a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, the lockers themselves. Yeah. They're fire, bro. bro this, <laughs> is, this is crazy. I mean, when we when we walked in this John and it was kind of revealed, like nobody had words. This is the craziest thing. Like I had some people hit me up afterwards after it was posted on social media, like, yo, y'all locker rooms is crazier than our football team's locker room. Where did the freight train name come from? It's actually hilarious. A really, really funny story. Freight train came on day one of practice. Um, the first year we got our whole new coaching staff. I was about to do my first run and I got my shirt off, compression tights on out there at practice. I'm a big guy, about 6'5", 230. And Coach Carroll's like, oh, don't stand on the track. It's freight train coming down. And I was like, yo, that's, that's kind of tight. That's kind of tight. And after talking with parents and coaches and everything, I'm, I'm at a position now where it's like, you know, you got to build your brand. And it's like, what do people want to see from the athletes? And when I get on that track, it's not Kyle Garland out there, it's Freight Train, you feel me? Right. So it's like, this is this is my track and field persona, something that's beyond me that I can kind of just take my mind to a to another level to flip that switch when I get out there. And it's like, it's all business. But yeah, no, this is my locker, ain't nothing too crazy. Got all my shoes in here. Got three pairs of running shoes in here, my slides for when I want to go take a shower and relax a little bit. Um, got my lifting shoes. And then all these spikes down here, Jeez. man. I got spikes on top of spikes on top of spikes. How does this locker uh, compare, like, to the to the old one, as far as like the efficiency of, of getting to your things? The old one, it seemed like it was about this size, but the components in it, it wasn't the same. It was just kind of like a lot of open space, so it wasn't really like everything was organized. And we didn't have this extra little carriage spot down in the bottom sure. to hold extra shoes. And for me, like I couldn't fit half of my stuff in the old locker room. So I do yeah. 10 different events, so that's 10 different pairs of spikes. All right, squad, so I'm here with uh, Matthew Bolin, my fellow Texan. All-American running here, here in Georgia. What would you kind of attribute to your success uh, here? Great coaching, great sports medicine staff, and just an all around um, village of great people. You know, they say it takes a village, so just having everyone on my side wanting to help me to get better in every area possible. Now, you guys just moved into this facility in February. What has been your favorite parts? Yeah, I think honestly just hanging out in here as a team. Um, the other facility we were in, it was nice, but we didn't have this this awesome lounge. We got a TV right here, a PS5. Um, we'll just sit here, play Fortnite, uh, Madden, whatever. We got two TVs back here. And one of our favorite things to do, uh, we had a whole uh, ping pong tournament going during March Madness. Are you good? I'm Are good. I'm in the final four right okay. now, yeah. <laughs> we'll see if I'm making it to the championship. Um, but we have a bracket that's usually on on this TV right here. Um, and just being able to hang out with the team and have fun, come in here, eat, study, mess around, do whatever, has just been really great and helped us to get closer as a team. Do you feel like it's helped you guys uh, achieve more success? Potentially. I mean, I think that's fair to say being able to have this, it's a privilege. We worked hard for it, of course, but being able to be rewarded for our hard work, it feels great. It kind of makes you feel like you're doing something right, you know, 
Um, so it just helps us to work harder and uh, gives us the facilities that we need right next to the training room, right next to the track to make everything easier and make life run smoother and better. Now, when you, when you first walked in, uh, obviously it was unveiled to you guys. I heard that you guys knew nothing about it. Nope. What was your first initial response? Um, I think when I walked through here and saw all these TVs, <laughs> my TV at home is like, half the size of one of these TVs. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be in here watching TV. And then we go here into the locker room and we have all our custom name plates with our signatures. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Like it was surreal. We were all just like genuinely so excited. It was, it was great. Now do some of the former Olympians or star studded athletes or track athletes come back and kind of talk to you or? We got a lot of them who come back here and train if they're not training here on the daily they'll come back here monthly and get training in and then we even have some olympians that are on the team currently so i mean everyone loves georgia who went through um loves to help and there's a big support system of alumni who like to come back and talk to the team and make sure that we all have what we need to succeed isn't having multiple pairs of earbuds and headphones a lifesaver? You know if you have multiple pairs of earbuds, you can store them in multiple places to make sure you can listen to what you want, when you want. And thanks to Raycon and their affordability, I have this luxury. I keep a pair in my gym bag, one at work. I even bring a backup pair when I travel. Pro tip, it's always good to carry a backup pair. Have you ever had wireless earbuds die you at the most inconvenient time? <laughs> well, that's not a problem when you carry your Raycon earbuds. So when I travel, I usually have two options with me at all times. Earbuds for when I'm walking through the airport and over the ear during my flight. Another great thing about Raycon is that they don't outsource the design and development of their earbuds. Their small but mighty team of design audio engineers cut their teeth at brands like Bose and Peloton. You see, Raycon is on a mission to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. It's an OBS product, crystal clear call quality, water and sweat resistant, plus you get eight hours of playtime for everyday earbuds. Please, at this point, just stop listening to me talk about them and click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash Koisky to get 15% off your next Raycon purchase. All right, squash, we're here with uh, Tatiana Marsh, All-American, uh, jumper, long, and triple, but your favorite is the triple. Yes. Why? Because that's what I'm best at, even though it stresses me out a lot more than long jump, <laughs> and it's more technical. Now, you're in year what at Georgia? Fifth. How have you seen uh, the facility? Because this is a new locker room uh, space. How does it compare to the former one? It's a lot bigger. We have a lot more space. We have a vanity, which is my favorite thing okay. about the locker room. <laughs> but the space that we have for lounge area is just bigger and we can come here throughout the day and not feel crammed up. I feel like this was a good team bonding area for us. And then the lockers itself are huge. And just like the details that we have like our signatures and stuff on it, it just makes it feel like, you know, we are like top tier. When the locker room was unveiled and you came in, like what was your favorite detail? Like the first thing that like, man, I really love this. The vanity. When I tell you in the old locker room, we didn't have much lighting at all. It was very dim. So when, say if we had like swag shots and stuff like that, and we were trying to do our makeup, it was hard to see. So like you had to touch it up outside the locker room because- With the sun and natural light. Yeah, <laughs> so you had to go outside and look in the camera <laughs> to try to see if you missed anything. Uh -huh. But in here we have the vanity, so it's just like, we can literally glam up before, like when we had our home meet, we all were in here just like glamming up before the meet. It was just so cute and fun. Well, uh, as we walk to the to the lounge, what made you uh, choose Georgia? Georgia, I chose Georgia because it's a good academic school. I graduated with a 4.3, so I Ooh. I take my education very seriously. I love the people and like the opportunities that I have outside of track as well, that they give me like leadership and um, career development and stuff like that, so. Yeah. All right, squad, so I'm here with Athletic Director, University of Georgia, Mr. Josh Brooks. The track facility's beautiful. I was blown away. Talked to some student athletes about it. They all loved it. Um, they didn't see it before, beforehand. <laughs> you kind of did. Yeah. So just walk me, uh, walk me through that kind of process beforehand and just putting it together and why the locker room is so important for you. Yeah, so uh, naturally, football built a new facility. We had this great space of a former locker room for football that had gone vacant and we're like we, how can we put this to use and we thought it'd be a great space for the track team we had a lot of work to do because it was one locker room with one shower bathroom facility so splitting it with two genders brought some physical challenges to construction um, so once we figured that part out and the flows of how it all worked then it turned over to track and their staff and coach carroll and saying all right how do we make this special what do you what's your vision what do you want to see and and really digging in the weeds without 
getting too much and giving that away to the kids, but knowing the things that would impact them as far as the lounge and all those things. We were very intentional about keeping them away and, and only showing them bits and pieces so that would be the big full reveal at the end. Now you kind of mentioned you were a former equipment manager. Could you just walk me through how that transitioned from equipment manager to, to now and did you see this coming? Did you see like athletic director coming when you were an equipment manager? Yeah, so when I was a student manager, I, my vision was to be a coach. I wanted to be the next head football coach somewhere, but and it evolved into uh, administration. Then my goal was to be an AD, but I think it was a great experience and it's been great for me now because it, when you see it from a, a student manager, equipment manager's perspective, it gives you a greater perspective of the entire athletic department. People that are often forgotten about, the trainers, the managers, video staff, custodians, but understanding that they're all important and they're so critical in this whole puzzle as we put together, I think has helped me do my job better and give me greater perspective. When I sit in the room with other ADs, a lot of them that I found come from more of a development background, fundraising. Um, it's very popular because a lot of times schools are looking for someone who can raise money. So someone who's got that fundraising background. So um, it gives me a different perspective than, than most. We kind of talked about this off camera, how bringing in experienced and, and winning coaches to, to, to help build that culture. And you brought in uh, Coach Carroll, who was winning before she got here. One, how did, how did you get her to come to Georgia? And then also seeing the success, how I've seen a lot of her, her student athletes have jumped into the record books in her first or second year since she's been here. Like what's kind of the, the I guess, driving force behind that? For me, with Coach Carroll, my goal in recruiting her was selling her on a vision and passion. You've got an AD here who wants to win in track, wants to be really good track and field, who's gonna support you, give you the resources you need to be successful, but also showing my passion for, for being competitive and knowing, I told her, I'm gonna be with you at Nationals, at your side there when you're holding up that trophy. You can sell a lot of physical things like facilities, things like that, and they're great. But to me, the number one thing I want to sell was, was the passion. You asked earlier, what, what was it, you know, what keys to being a successful ID? For me, it's being humble enough to know that it's not me that makes the difference. It's my coaches, my student athletes, my staff. And that humility leads to saying, I'm going to go hire the best. It's not about me, it's about my coaches and me serving them and helping them be great at what they do.